Welcome back my friends to the show that never ends. Welcome back to the album review channel for an album review today that will redefine the meaning of the word eclectic. 10CC were an English prog art band from the 1970s based in Manchester that created a blend of music always on the change. Words, rhythm, chords, vocals, harmony and musical styles were all combined to produce an amazing mixture that captured the British music scene, in particular, and the album How Dare You from 1976 was the peak of their success at the time. All were highly trained musicians that got together to build their own recording setup called Strawberry Studios. Eric Stewart on vocals, guitars and keyboards, Lal Cream on vocals, keyboards and guitars, Graham Goldman on bass, vocals and percussion, and Kevin Godley on drums, percussion and vocals, turned themselves into what became 10cc. Godley and Cream were certainly the more pioneering and experimental within the group, eventually splitting from the other two to develop new style synthesizer sounds, as well as being at the forefront of early video development. Stuart and Goldman relaunched a new 10cc, keeping the band going until the early 90s. Let's have a look at the album in full. The album starts off with an instrumental called How Dare You, and straight away on the opening track, you get an idea of the advanced thinking the group created. As an established vocal group, they started this album with an instrumental. It paints a picture of a Far Eastern market in my mind's eye and takes us straight into the second track. Track two is called Lazy Ways and this one is sung by Eric Stewart. It has a wispy lead that tells of someone trying to be as lazy as possible without the intention of ever getting a job. It also features the early use of a guitar device called the Gizmotron. Godly and Cream are developed to mimic the sound of an orchestra and thus keep down the production costs. Track three is called I Wanna Rule The World. This is quite a maniacal sounding rant of someone looking to take over the world. This is written by Godley and Goldman and includes the mid-song rant. A brand new world will rise from the ashes and there upon a rock titanic I'll cast a giant shadow on the face of the deep and never again will they dare to call me a freckled, spotty, specky, four-eyed, weenie, little green. Track four is called I'm Mandy Fly Me and it starts off with the sounds of being in a plane. song then blasts into telling the story of someone down on the lock seeing a pretty air hostess on a poster in an airport gesturing fly me and then imagining how the story would pan out a rather catchy whistle section from Stuart, extravagant chord changes from majors to minors and sharp harmonies paint a vivid picture of someone flying changing tempo again there is the first of two guitar solos before Finally, an imaginary crash, we come back to reality again. It's a wicked track that reached number 6 in the UK charts and number 60 on the Billboard Hot 100. Highly inventive and turned out to be a brilliant single. Track 4 is called Iceberg and we're back in experimental mixtures of vocals and chord changes. Iceberg ends side one with Godley and Gouldman sharing vocals on this one. Godley himself mischievously described it as Lol and I were into structural changes and being outrageous. And I saw it as my job to bring a slither of darkness into Graham's life and it worked. That said, it's all about someone stalking a woman with the ultimate result, results not being so good. Side two would start off with track six, Art for Art's Sake, and this was another successful single release from the album, and offers little into the mix. 
Sarcastic lyrics throughout, not the most exciting guitar and repetitious set of lyrics. Stuart excels on the lyrics, he really was a great lead singer. This theme was later used for the basis of Good Morning Judge once the band had split. Track 7 is called Rock and Roll Lullaby and it's an old fashioned rock and roll song with the vocals shared by Godley and Stuart. It's an okay song, nothing special. Essentially a father's song to his daughter as he is back from work and putting her to bed. Track 8 is called Headroom, and this one, it's a song about having sex. And another of the tracks that has more chord changes and tempo variations that are a characteristic of this album. Verses are of a slowish blues-like nature with the chorus exploding into life. It features a sliding guitar solo as well. The standard version of the album ends with track 9, Don't Hang Up. And... It's a sad tale of a crumbling marriage with a husband attempting to salvage the relationship. Godley's vocals make a wonderful piece with a simple electric piano accompanying to start with. Flashbacks to the wedding and past holidays are recounted before a flamenco style interlude takes us to the final part where we revisit the opening format of the song again. Beautiful harmonies throughout with the Gizbatron used again to recreate a violin-like sound. It's a strong end to the album. I really like this album and was a big fan of the group in the 70s, with this one becoming a firm favourite. The standout track was I'm Mandy Fly Me, but the rest of the tracks do warrant consideration, and they are a group that we will revisit again in another episode. If there is a particular favourite you would like me to review, then let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this review, then consider hitting any of the video options available, as all feedback is welcome. Now, before I go, have a look at this video here to see a similar review of Some Burst Finish by Bebop Deluxe, who were a similar group in a similar time space. It's one you don't want to miss, so I'll see you across there. And finally, thank you for watching.